recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. This is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil, and I haven't said that in a long time. Oh, one take, Neil, back in the studio. But as it's far seen, as you are all aware, yeah. it's been one it's week. It's just been one week. Yeah, it's been. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't tease we the fans. That. Better him than me. But wait, it's been a summer summer break. Yeah. We didn't. I did nothing. Did anyone do anything? Oh, I maybe moved across the country. You, yeah, way. you moved across. You're you're moving across country, and I'm in the process. I'm in Pennsylvania right now. Right. You have. We have the shipping updates that we're getting by text <laughs> and says you're in Indiana. He's yeah. in a crate. I, in the back of a semi truck. <laughs> well, he's recording from one of those uh, U-ship containers or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Fragile. I, I went fr- to Yosemite. That's right. You went to Yosemite. Mm. How was that? It was great. Saw saw some mountains. Yeah, some mountains. What else? What else is it? Yosemite. Hiking. Hmm? Hiking, mountains, what else you got over there? Yogi bear? bears. Yeah. Some water, bodies of water. Okay. All kinds of stuff. Trees, big trees. Human bodies. <laughs> uh not that I saw, but well, that's probably good. They're Maybe. buried well. Yeah. Right. I was gonna say uh I wasn't really up to much this summer, but I remembered that we re- adopted a rescue puppy, so that's been fun. Yeah. Congratulations. And you went to Nashville? Yeah. Yeah, had a had a weekend in Nashville love, that wasn't love a vacation. The Nash. love yeah, the Nash. it is a lovely town. But did you buy any boots? I did not. Mm, you're missing out. I don't like walking. And I've heard that the boots are made for walking. So you did get a cowboy hat though, because you're wearing it in the studio today. And that's it. Yeehaw! A visual for the fans at home. <laughs> Just the boots and the cowboy hat. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, yeah, that's all he's wearing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I was in Austin, Texas, so shooting a movie for a month, and uh, that went well. It was just 103 every day, so it was something to get used to. <laughs> and wildfires, I saw. And there was a wildfire on uh, really close to our, our set, so the that was gender interesting. reveal party gone wrong. Yeah, all the really young PAs were freaking out, and we're like, just you know, it's okay, we'll be fine. We'll <laughs> Fire on set is normal. <laughs> kids, like, we need they to, just don't get it. We need to shoot today. Don't tell the actors. Uh, but no, it was a great time. So uh, be on the lookout for that movie. So there's when the it comes summer out. recap. Summer recap. But uh, coming back to the studio, it's been, I guess, behind the scenes about a month and a half. But back to the studio, we have some guests today that we're excited to introduce. We'll start with our host uh, who put together uh, today's game. Uh, He reached out after he uh, joined Patreon, and uh, we gave him a nice audio recording. Because if you're at a a Savage Superstar level like he is, uh, you can request a a recording of whatever you want. And he Uh, asked us to give him some trivia tips. That's why I know the name. Yes. We did a really weird thing. We did a weird thing. Uh, (laughs) But he enjoyed it, it seems, or at least he's lying to us. We don't know. Uh, But he's coming to us from Ohio, uh, and it is Jack Armstrong, or to us, uh, he is known as Jacked Armstrong. Welcome. Hey, guys. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you? Uh, oh, you know, living the dream. Uh, yeah, that was probably the funniest four minutes of recording I've ever heard. Um, I still listen. You guys gave me a mantra to deal with at the end. I still listen to the mantra every single day. Um, it's actually just my ringtone to wake up in the morning. I don't even remember what we said. What, what, what was the mantra? the mantra? Can you let us know? Uh, it was just to live up to my jacked Armstrong name and just oh, yeah. to constantly, you know, live up to that and of course you know uh, i heard all about 4d wombats and oh, oh um, that one 4d wombat poop oh yeah it was the like bit's the, the so best, good it should have made the podcast that we ever had and it didn't uh it wasn't was for only one person no we save our good bits for the patreon supporters that's true so only it's like we said it's like the wu-tang album like only jack will be able to hear it for eternity <laughs> right. shall we share yeah. just that bit do you know what I like? No, that's just for Jack, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I will say the one thing that I really enjoy, though, is that we told him he needed to live up to his name. That's the best advice you can give because it doesn't actually imply anything. Like, <laughs> he could be living up to his name right now. Yeah, I true. am, yeah. So, cheers. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll post that <laughs> clip in Discord for all the okay. you know, Patreon yeah. members to hear. If you, yeah, if you, if you choose to share it there, please. You but, can mint uh, it as an NFT. That's People your, can purchase that's your it bit, if they want so to. Do with it as you please. And uh, what are you doing in Ohio? Oh, nothing much. Uh, just moved into a house with my girlfriend. Congrats. Uh, Congrats. Otherwise, I I'm of you know almost twenty, so not doing too much with my life so far. Just you know working in a warehouse and you know enjoying friends and family as it goes. That's great. Well, we appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule to come hang with us. I know oh, yeah, when I, I was just... twenty, I had neither a house nor a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'd barely gotten my driver's license. Well, uh, well, thank you for joining us, Jack. And uh, we have a special guest today who's actually going to be playing with Jeff, and we'll get to their team name in a minute. Uh, she's coming to us from Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, she's a Not A Robot supporter on Patreon, which we appreciate. Leanne Cromer, how are you doing, Leanne? Hi, great. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So, yeah, I live in Baltimore, Maryland with my husband and our twin three-year-old girls. 
um, who keep us extremely busy. So that's about all I do. Um, I'm a collection development librarian at a public library here in Maryland. Awesome. That's great. Thank you for all the work you do with the library. That's really important. Love the library. Support your library. And uh, <laughs> Jeff, uh, you're going to partner with Leanne today. And uh, I think we talked about your affinity for The Wire, both of you. We did, yeah. Leanne is in Baltimore. And um, apparently there, I can't quite see it, but there is a, a nice picture of Omar Little in the background, um, which is where he comes from. He's always sneaking up on people. So yeah. uh, we're going to be Omar's coming. Okay, the OC. <laughs> The OC, there don't, call it, don't call it that. Baltimore, Mary. I can't even, the California doesn't work there. Um, <laughs> I was like, where are you going OC, with it? Yeah, it doesn't work. Wait. <laughs> uh, and then Ken, you, singing hairspray. you came up with an, a name for uh, Matt and I who are going to play together uh, based on Jack's last name, Armstrong, and the fact that he's from Ohio. Yeah, well, we watched uh, First Man, the Neil Armstrong uh, picture yesterday. And then I, I was prompted to look at uh, Neil Armstrong's Wikipedia. And I found this story about... Neil Armstrong's barber of 20 years was selling his hair. <laughs> so he, Neil Armstrong sued him to get the hair back. They couldn't recover the hair, so the barber had to donate to a charity of Armstrong's choice. Donate so, hair or money? Money. Oh. If they couldn't recover the hair. So let, why don't you guys be Neil Armstrong's follicles? Sounds good with me. That's a crazy story. I'd like to see a movie about that incident alone. And then Buzz Aldrin comes and punches someone. Would it have been yeah. more interesting than First Man? Uh, no, First Man's great. Is it? Mm. Yeah. Haven't seen it, but I heard mixed reviews. So, All right. Jeff, take. Um, well, let's. Uh, <laughs> this has been Jeff's movie reviews. Let's go to. Yeah, we'll <laughs> <see it. laughs> I was going to say, most of the movies are movies I haven't seen, so it's just, huh, I haven't seen it. <laughs> well, we've been off the air behind the scenes for a while, but we were able to get Idris Elba to uh, to do our rules reading today as Omar, so uh, we're going to let rules him do it. The rules of the game was simple. He's not Omar, is he? Is he? No. Or is no. Michael K. Williams? Michael, Michael Kenneth Williams. Okay, yeah. I haven't seen the it. The so. game's got to have rules. We got Idris Elba anyway. I invited him to be Omar. Sadly, so. sadly Michael Kenneth Williams is not able to do it anymore. Oh. But uh, I'll pour one out for him. Uh, well, let's let's hear the rules read, though, uh, and hopefully it won't be a downer. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not be in, but the cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. All right. The uh, rules have been said. So uh, it's going to be uh, me and Matt as Neil Armstrong's follicles versus Jeff and Leanne Omar's coming. So take it away, Jack. All right. So like we talked about beforehand, um, everyone here is probably a little bit older than me. So it's kind of poking fun at that. So uh, round one, question one, is the very model of a trivia question. Uh, in the 1879 comic opera, The Pirates of Penzance, the classic song known commonly as Modern Major General, Major General Stanley, his information blank, blank, and blank, which sounds like he is trying to play 20 questions. Full points for two of the categories, a bonus five for the third area of information. Do you, do you know it? I, know, I think I know two of them. Well, I know none of them, so I'm okay. not helpful. Uh, well, yeah, we'll let them talk. So... Leanne, help me out. The only thing I know I think about it rhymes. Pirates... Okay. Uh, so I was thinking maybe one, and he said twenty questions. So I was thinking maybe one of them might be mineral because that kind of rhymes with general. Okay. If you kind of skew it, I don't. I know the I can hear the the phrase in my head, but mostly just the my modern major general. <laughs> and then the part you I need mean, to the know. Three, the three categories from twenty questions are animal, vegetable, mineral. Okay. Do you think it might be one of those? I mean, those? that could be the three, animal, vegetable, mineral. Could be. I'm good with that. That's better than anything I have. Um, the only thing I know okay. about Pirates of Penzance is that song was adapted by Tom Lehrer in 1959 to form the Elements song, a song I know quite well. So the tune is very much in my head, but none of the words. Mm -hmm. Not a big, who was the? Um... Kelsey Grammer. No, no, this was, okay. um... Neil, help me out. Who did this? <laughs> to what? Who did uh, Pirates of Penzance? This was, um... Oh, it's, a. Uh... Oh, geez. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have played today. I am not in it. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> Gilbert and Sullivan. Gil yes, Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, yeah. Yes. So those are the two things I know about this. So I'm good going, what was it? Animal, vegetable, mineral? Yeah. Okay. I like it. <laughs> yeah. That's some confidence over there. <laughs> well, I, I hope uh, Leanne is correct because I had the same three, animal, mineral, vegetable. 
And yeah, uh, points for both teams. Those are all three. So that's 15 points per team. That's a great way to start the game. It is. Yeah, it is. Indeed. <laughs> uh, so for question two, we have RIP to the OG. Um, Betty White, inarguably a truly beloved American legend, was known for many things in her time. From starring in countless movies, TV shows, and being an overall amazing woman, she even predated some unbelievable things. Uh, something as cutting edge as penicillin discovered in 1928, scotch tape in 25, and sliced bread also in 1928. With all of that, when was Betty White born? With one point awarded for how close you are within 10 years. So say she was born in 2020, you guessed 2010, you get zero points working up from there. I just need math to do the math because I know when she, I know how old she was when she passed <laughs> Why away. Are you so bad at this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can subtract that very easy number. Uh, okay, so we'll lock in. Yeah, I believe she was born January. Uh, was it nineteenth of twenty twenty or nineteen twenty two? Nineteen twenty two. Did she die this year? She died in twenty one, like the last day of the year. She, she was almost a hundred. And she was ninety nine, right? Yeah, she was almost a hundred. Yeah, she was born in January yeah. of of nineteen twenty two. I just can't remember exactly when. It's like in the in the tens, teens, something like that. So, but yeah, I, I agree because we'll I think she was just shy of hundred. So shall so we go January of nineteen twenty two? Do we need the date or just the year? Just the year. Uh, just the year. I would still yeah, like to go January of 1922. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pedantic Jeff. Great. Um, yeah, I remember U.S. or people put out a, like a happy 100th birthday Betty White like the week after she died. Yeah, it was something. like a little premature. Yeah. A little bit. Sad. But yeah, she passed away at 99. She was going to turn 100 January of 2022. So we said nineteen. we were counting back one by one because we couldn't do the we math. Do the and math. That's 1922. <laughs> yep, count, I saw you counting on your fingers for about five minutes. Um so yeah, both the points to both teams, uh, exactly on the number. Uh, Jeff is even more right because he got uh, her birth month as well. Don't tell uh, him that. But... He, he doesn't need it. <laughs> no extra points, though. Uh, that's fine. But yeah, so uh, you know, sliced bread was the greatest thing since Betty White, uh, which is what inspired me to make that question. Uh, so in question number three, this is not a chemistry question. Um, in the hit 90s show Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Will Smith's Uncle Phil is a judge and senior partner at a law firm with a name based off a popular 70 R&B and funk band. Points for the name of the band, bonus five for the name of the firm he works for. The only thing I'm, I'm fixating on is that he said it's not a chemistry question. So I'm trying oh, to think right. if there's any bands I can think of that might have a chemistry angle. Funk, like an element maybe? Yeah, it could be. Probably not Earth, Wind, Fire. They didn't really do funk. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I think we can tap out. I, I'm just failing yeah. to remember this. I mean, I watched okay. Fresh Prince a bit as a kid, but I don't remember this. Yeah. So you guys were trying to crack the element uh, angle. angle. Yeah. I wasn't quite. We're working. just not coming up with anything. We went with the uh, R and B slash funk angle, and we th Matt wrote down some band names. And we were like, which one could sound like an actual person's name? Yeah, we went with Sly and the Family Stone and the law firm of Sly and Stone, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, so that's a good guess. And Jeff, you talked yourself out of it. It actually was Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, no. Um, Why uh, didn't we I, say it? <laughs> I, I was going to do not an Avatar question, <laughs> but I didn't know how many people would get that. So, But the, uh, law, the, the law firm was Firth, Wind, and Meyer was the oh, law firm okay. they worked for. Yeah. Uh, so question uh, number four is a link to the way past. Uh, the Legend of Zelda, arguably my favorite video game series of all time, first in was introduced to the market in 1986. However, until the third installment of the game, the Japanese version of the game fell underneath a different translation. The name was eventually changed to not be confused with another of their games, Final Fantasy. What was the original name of the Japanese copy of the game? Leanne... You a big fan of the original Legend of Zelda? No. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what what words might sound like Final Fantasy. Ultimate Dreamscape. Um, Not a bad guess. No. I mean, and translations from Japanese tend to be kind of weird anyways because they don't necessarily have direct parallels. But... Um, I don't know. You want to just put that in as a joke? Last time I thought we should Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we just tapped out for... No points, so for no reason. We'll just we had guess answer. ultimate dreamscape. Ultimate dreamscape. Okay. Ultimate as in final. Hmm. So Final Fantasy got got its name because 
Square, the producer who made the game, was going bankrupt and it was going to be their last game if it was a fail. So they named it Final Fantasy. Um, I don't know how this would play into what this is, but we just went with the fantasy element and the legend of Zelda and said fantasy legend. Uh, So both you guys were kind of close, but it was actually the Hyrule fantasy. Fantasy Mm. was actually in there. You know, High Rules, where Legend of Zelda is based off of. It was a very literal translation. They eventually changed it to not, you know, coincide with uh, Final Fantasy. Hopefully, the easiest uh, one that's on this one. Uh, question five: A truly magical question. Uh, Magic: The Gathering, a still popular trading card game released in 1993, has had its fair share of extremely expensive pieces of cardboard. Some of the most prevalent released in the first few years, commonly called the Power Nine. Of these nine cards, five are part of the original Mox blank cards, with the blank being filled in by pr- various precious gems, four of which being birthstones. For two points apiece, name the five box cards. Oh, Jeff's right, got ten points for good. Jeff. Yeah. So we just, oh, need to, we just need to name birthstones? <laughs> I don't know. Right? I, mean, I don't know. That's what it sounds like. These are these are the very expensive cards. I happen to know all of the Moxen. So the cards are Mox blank there's five of them. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll give you the... And they're all stones. Stones or yeah. gems. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Four of them are birthstones. One's just a precious gem. All right, oh, so, so let's just name some birthstones. Yeah, which ones sound like they'd be in magic? Like sapphire? Sapphire, definitely. Emerald? Okay, start writing them down. All there right. we got sapphire. We got emerald. We got... Ruby? Ruby? Uh, that's a good one. What about... Um, Remember the, uh, can I give them a hint, Jeff? Is Amethyst. Okay? This is... They're doing fine without think, it. Think about the colors. I don't want to think about the together. Oh, we got some white. We got oh, some... Oh, yeah. What's white? Diamond? No. Maybe there's a diamond. Throw the diamond, diamond. in there. Diamond. And we got to do one more, right? Diamond, and Let's ruby. do it. And one's not a birthstone. Oh, right. So we got so sapphire's say... blue, emerald's green, ruby's red, diamond's white, and green. Um, what, oh, green we already got, right? Yeah, emerald. Yeah. Uh, well, I know Lotus is expensive, but I don't think it's expensive. Oh, I think uh, White Lotus is a very um, expensive card. No, we'll just say White Lotus. I don't You're raising know. Jeff's blood pressure right now. My blood <laughs> pressure hasn't changed at all. Um, I don't believe that. All right, so what do you got? Sapphire, Emerald, Ruby, Diamond, White Lotus. Mm-hmm. They sound like Pretty different good. Pokemon so you, games. You actually named uh, four magic cards in there. Um Di- uh, Mox Diamond is is a Mox card, but it's not considered the original Power Nine. Um, so your colors being um, white, blue, black, red, green, you would have Mox Pearl, uh, Mox Jet are your white and black, and then you were all correct. Mox Emerald, Sapphire, and Ruby are all also correct. So uh, yeah, Jeff couldn't have explained it better than I did. Um, yeah, it's Mox Sapphire, Mox Ruby, Mox Pearl, Mox Jet, and Mox Emerald. You guys really talked yourself into three of those with some great reasoning. Uh, it's the Black Lotus, not the White Lotus. Mm. I, I don't know if White Lotus is actually a thing. Um, but as far as I know, Black Lotus is the only uh, popular Lotus. Mox so, Lotus, I believe, was an unset card, but like a joke card yeah. they made. Leanne, you picked the right partner for this game. <laughs> <laughs> she bailed me out of the first one. Mm. Well, so far, both teams doing uh, pretty well in this game. Uh, 35 points for the OC, Omar's coming, and Neil Armstrong's follicles, 31 points. So hot on the tail. Hey, right there. On that note, I think it's because I was actually born in the 1880s, oh, which fair. is why I'm doing well. That's fair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, all right, so for question number six, the king of pop. Michael Jackson, a name that needs no introduction, did his fair share of selling out throughout his career. However, not all of them went well. The King of Pop was almost metaphorically dethroned when his hair caught fire doing a commercial for which soft drink company? I remember this now. <laughs> now you're in my now house. We're in. <laughs> <laughs> we'll lock in over here. From the that movie. I forget which one it is. They, they reenacted this pretty. Mm-hmm. It's pretty, yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> his face melts. I could make some guesses, but I don't know this story. So okay. if you're more familiar. I'm trying to think of what soft drink would be extreme. And I don't think he was signed up on the Red Bull wagon. Surge. But uh, too er- yeah, too Red early. Red Bull right? gives you wings. So. But I could see I could see like a Mountain Dew stunt gone awry. I could see that. Was Mountain Dew around then? I don't oh, know when it Oh, came very out. much so. 100%. I've been I've been yeah. drinking that for since I was a wee lad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm fine In with the that 1930s. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bottle of Mountain Dew. 
Hands me my dude. Wait, mixing it with whiskey as it was intended. Mm-hmm. That's true. We learned that on this show. That's why my growth got stunted. So you're going Mountain Dew? Uh, yeah, I don't. I, Leon, I don't know. I don't remember this incident at all. Doesn't seem like we've got a yeah. better guess. So, I mean, it probably. I, I don't know. I mean, I would say it's probably not like Coke or Pepsi, just because I feel like it's not one of those like the big ones. So I yeah. feel like something like Mountain Dew is. Yeah. I yeah. Those answer. those two are trying to heal the world. Mountain Dew is just trying to set stuff on fire. So. <laughs> Matt and I remember this when it happened. I remember seeing the video many mm-hmm. times, uh, and it is related to Mountain Dew because it's Mountain Dew's parent company. We went with Pepsi. Really? Yeah, Pepsi's correct. Um, the story goes, as far as I believe, he just leaned back into a sign too far. His hair caught fire, and he wasn't aware of it until a producer came and tackled him to the ground because he just kept dancing with his hair on fire. Mm-hmm. Melted his first face. Yep. Uh, so question seven is trivialities high school years. Um, certain inventions and discoveries changed humanity forever. Anywhere from something as simple and old as the wheel to as new and complex as bullet trains. One such revolutionary discovery was in the ninth century CE. I'm sure everyone here remembers this in the headlines. Uh, the discovery of gunpowder. It is believed to have been discovered by Chinese monks. What were they trying to create when they accidentally discovered it? I really don't know. I'm I'm trying to think of what monks would be doing. The only things I could think of were like writing, like trying to do some sort of like writing or some sort something with tea. Those were the two things I came up with. I'm trying to think about what the process is for making gunpowder. So there's like saltpeter or something in there, and the, there's whatever that thing uh, we made a joke of for a while, but the word is escaping me. Potash. 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 Yep. Oh yeah. 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 Salt Peter, a guy who like always eats too much salt, and he's kind of like swollen. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I just love pizza. <laughs> no, salt. I I always imagined Salt Peter um, was just kind of the guy who was up playing on tilt his whole life. Like every time he was in a board game, he'd start to fall behind, and he'd get like, "This game is stupid." That's Salt Peter. Um, Salty Peter. Do you think they could have been trying to like preserve food, like preserve meats or something? Maybe. I mean, I I think they were. I don't know if they were trying to make fireworks. Maybe candles candles maybe, maybe get candles to burn longer or something and then it's like well crap this this didn't go as planned lighting for <laughs> yeah. candles yeah go to the bathroom with a candle and it just explodes <laughs> it's terrifying i mean usually when i go to the bathroom with a candle there's an explosion <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you're constipated it's the best way to get scared shit, so. <laughs> oh my god guys <laughs> family right, show what do you guys think maybe i don't i wish i knew um i mean do you want to guess the the fireworks angle or do you want to guess something that like monks would be trying to do like make incense or candles or something candles okay we're gonna say they were trying to make a better burning candle uh we went with tea we don't know can i take a guess here were they doing alchemy and trying to make gold uh close um they were trying to make the elixir of life they were trying to figure out how to uh preserve their lives forever and ended up making the deadliest thing uh, from the nuke. Wow. Instead, nah. they invented yeah. irony. Wonderful. Uh, TNT didn't get yeah. invented for another 10 centuries. So, Yeah, tea. What an explosive flavor, though, if you put gunpowder in tea. Uh, <laughs> those old monk hijinks that we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> gunpowder tea sounds like something they'd sell you on like a YouTube the, ad. There is uh, such a thing. It's yeah. uh, Gunpowder tea is rolled uh, tea leaves. Oh. oh, okay. Good job. Or Again. something like that. Um... All right, so question number eight is special to my heart. Uh, Dragonheart, a film made in 1996, is an often forgotten gem of the 90s, with the main character being played by Dennis Quaid and being dra- directed by Rob Cohen. This movie has no shortage of big names to star in this movie, including the voice of Draco the Dragon. Who plays Draco, the same actor of Professor Henry Jones and in Indiana Jones in the original James Bond? Oh, we can lock in. If it's the original James Bond, I believe that would be Sean Connery, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, he was yeah. also in Indiana Jones. He was he was the dad or whatever. So yeah, I, I mean that's yeah, I agree. Okay, we're gonna lock in yeah. Sean Connery. I think Neil locked in early on this one, right? I did. Yeah, we we also said Sean Connery. Cool. I'm glad that was a slam dunk. Yeah, Sean Connery in my favorite movie as a kid. Um, I have no idea why it was. Was it the only movie, movie you had? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i had the vhs of uh dragon heart and it was the worst movie i've ever seen but i loved it oh that had to be with uh dog. richie rich oh richie rich yeah <laughs> so that was my favorite movie i think you're gonna say no blank reason. check oh i also had blank check 
That movie's oh, creepy. Oh. It wore that one out. Like yeah, a thirty year old kisses a kid. Yeah. Well, that's why he he loves kissing <laughs> women who are twenty years older than him. <laughs> Let's move on. He named the dog Indiana. <laughs> All right, on to question nine, um, a monster mash. Mash, first appearing on screens around the world in 1972, was nothing short of legendary. With 255 episodes over 11 seasons, it was a hit with fans worldwide. This was reflected by the finale of the show, with it being the most watched TV series episode of all time. Four points. How many people tuned into the finale, plus or, five, plus or minus five million? Uh, you have an idea, don't you? Yeah, I actually know it because I, I was just working on that book about TV stuff. Oh, so how convenient! How for convenient us. for us? <laughs> we, yeah, we, if you're good with me, we can lock in. Neil's yeah. cheating at trivia by working at it <laughs> <laughs> by learning. Yeah. By learning, this isn't fair. I didn't know you could learn things. <laughs> I've definitely well, heard that, this before. What do you think? Well, I know that like people used to watch all used to watch the same thing, right? Because there was like five channels. So there was, the numbers were so much higher than they are today. So I'm trying to think of like a really highly watched episode today. What kind of like ballpark of number would that have? Because it's going to be like a lot higher than that. Right. I I mean, tends to be, I think these days, the Super Bowl is still kind of the big like event. And I feel like that might be approaching the hundred million mark for, people watching um i wouldn't be surprised if mash you know often the the trivia rule of thumb is you know if you have to be within some you know five million that's a 10 percent margin of error right people would guess 50 but i wouldn't be surprised if it was a little higher you know 65 70 million maybe a little more than that yeah i i would say like around 70 or 75 yeah i think so because let's go 75 we're gonna say 75 million wow and we had to be within like one or something you said, or within five? Within five. Okay. I think rounded up, uh, it's 106 million. Whoa. Uh, yeah. And 105.9 million people <sighs> tuned in uh, with an all time high in the last six minutes, like 114. It was crazy. Uh, I think the most watched Super Bowl is only even like just breaking 100. Yeah, it's pretty insane because I remember uh, the top six is pretty interesting. It's Mash Cheers with 80 million, and then the Fugitive the TV series, <laughs> Seinfeld Friends, and then uh, randomly Magnum PI with like 80 oh, wow. or something around Magnum there. PI, huh? Or 60, yeah. All right, uh, and then for the last question of round one, uh, it's richer than fiction. In The Hobbit, a book published in 1937, Smog was a villain of legends, a stereotypical dragon who stole the wealth of the dwarves in the Lonely Mountain and then some. However, even as literal mountains worth of gold is dwarfed by the uh, number one richest fictional character of all time. Who is the original fi- richest fictional character and bonus five for his placement among the richest people in the world at $54.1 billion? Do mm. you think so? I think I, I think I saw an article once that named this person as the richest, which I was like, there's no way. But Are they assuming depth on the thing that he jumps in? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could be way off, but I think it it's might be. Because <laughs> originally I was thinking of when I looked at the list, right? I was like, oh, it's got to be uh, Donald Trump. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's got to be him, right? But then he wasn't even like in the top ten. No, he's a scientist. They don't make that much money. So I don't. How do you feel about the one I wrote down? I like him. Okay, good guy. All right, we'll we'll lock Scottish. it in. <laughs> <What>? Even more specific. <laughs> so I I think, and I this is what I thought before they started talking over there. Uh, Scrooge McDuck um, might be the richest. He did say Scottish. He did say swimming in <laughs> <laughs> subtle clues. Um, swimming in coins. That whatever. being said, if he had fifty-four billion dollars, where would he be in the rankings? And so Elon Musk is approaching two hundred billion. Jeff Bezos is plus one hundred fifty billion, something like that. Bill Gates, Warren Buffett are more richer than that. I believe Carlos Slim is richer than that. Um, Larry Ellison is about that point. Brennan Page are, I think, in the 40 billions. Um, You've got... Wow, you've really been doing the dreaming. Some dreaming. (laughs) No. I mean, I would say top 10. I would say somewhere in the top 10. I actually... Maybe not. It might actually be outside the top 10 now. Um, People gained a lot of... People gained a lot of wealth in the last two years. Um, By exploiting people. Well, just by... The nature of the pandemic by exploiting too. people it's generally how you yeah, by there. exploiting people <laughs> um i i would say why don't, why don't we just make it an even 10 
Okay. Number 10. Yeah, yeah. we went with Scrooge McDuck, obviously. Um, and then Matt, uh, what number? Uh, pff, I probably, let's do seven. Seven sounds good. Yeah. All right, so full points for Scrooge McDuck. Uh, and as of time recording, he would be the 25th richest wow. person in the world oh. with $54 billion. Yeah, it, there's a lot of people with money. So Smog has money? It's well, not just a just, just watch well, the movies, not, man. It's not liquid. Yeah, he watch has the to movies. convert it. I mean, does he actually earn the money? Or he's just a dragon, well, he though. He stole it. Oh, yeah. what does he do yeah, with he, the money, he, though? He, he just sits on it. These are the same yeah, questions I have for these he billionaires, Neil. He hoards. But he doesn't just or- like Jeff Bezos. He doesn't spend the money, though? No, he loans it to you for a high no, interest he, rate. Neither oh. do the billionaires that we just talked about. That's true. That's true. All right. Yeah, Smog just steals the things he wants and goes on with his day. That's it. All right, after the first round, looks like Neil Armstrong's follicles made their move. They're at 71 points. Omar is coming a little bit behind, 55 points. That can all be made up in the swing round. And I just want to let you know, Neil, I spelled Neil Armstrong's name incorrectly on my paper and spelled it your way. Oh, thank you. But uh, That's how it should have been spelled. I should have, I should have fixed it. it was <laughs> he would have gone day. to Mars if it was N-E-A-L. Mm. All right, what's the swing round today? All right, swing round is kind of simple. Um, this is just going to test your concept of time. Uh, I'm going to give you a prompt and ask if the thing was before or after the year I say, and you're just going to tell me before or after. That's all it is. So say I'm going to say, you know, COVID happened before or after 2019. Everyone would say after, after 2020. Yeah, that's it. That's it's the whole swing round. All right. Uh, so question one is, was YouTube released before or after the year 2008? Uh, question two is, was Coke invented before or after the year 1900? Was Tesla founded before or after the year 2000? Was the Hubble telescope launched before or after 1989? Was the first Furby released before or after 1995? Was the Wii U released before or after 2014? Was Google released before or after 2003? Was the first printing press perfected before or after 1392? Was the iPhone 7 released before or after 2013? And was the first podcast released before or after 2007? Awesome. So you guys have a 50-50 shot here. Uh, Given no knowledge on the subject, good luck, and we'll be right back. Okay, all the answers are now locked in. And before we get to them, just wanted to send a big thank you to all our Patreon supporters uh, including Jack and Leanne. Uh, they help us uh, continue to grow the show. And right behind Jack right now, we see one of our posters uh, that he got for being a Savage Superstar, the uh, the video game uh, version of our faces, which is always fun. It was one of our first uh, art pieces that was uh, made for us. But uh, but yeah, we, we really appreciate all of your support. Uh, we've been able to get new equipment and um, have more bonuses and all that good stuff. And there's just hours and hours of content on Patreon. Uh, and Ken, how do you feel about doing the crop drop uh, every every month love the crop drop i would do the crop drop all the time if i could because it's so fun yeah that would maybe just be the full show or like just joking around and answering people's questions Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just letting our personality shine yeah but alas we must continue doing trivia (laughs) all right we have to we have to provide trivia for for the masses and that's people yep and even if we're not good at it sometimes we at least have to provide it so that's what we try (laughs) to do and we can only do that with the help of our patrons so if you'd like to join jack and leanne you can go to patreon.com slash triviality podcast and we would appreciate your support. Triviality. Trivia for the people. And on that note, we will move on to the answers of the swing round. I didn't uh, know we rebranded. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jack, or Jacked, can we get the uh, questions one more time? And these guys will provide their answers. Absolutely. All right. So uh, question one was, was YouTube released before or after the year 2008? Uh, I remember the first video being that guy at the zoo. And I think that that was before. So we said before. We also said before. And before is correct, 2005. It was all about the evolution of dance, Matt. Mm. Uh, Question two, was Coke invented before or after the year 1900? Uh, We went with before. We were also pretty sure this was before. Uh, And before is correct, 1886. Was Tesla Motor Company founded before or after 2000? Uh, This one, no idea on. We just guessed after. We said after. Yeah, after 2003. Right. Good job so far, uh, guys. Was the Hubble telescope launched before or after 1989? I think I remember seeing something about 
hail bop being close to it and i think that was around the same time so we said before we said after uh, points to one team after mm. in 1990 oh Ooh, really close go ahead was, after was... we did that was much closer than i was anticipating yeah. i thought it was in the 90s but barely so you guys got points we did yes okay. was the furby released before or after 1995 uh, I remember this being the biggest toy of 98, I think. We said after. We also remembered uh, being a little later than that, so we said after. Uh, yeah, 1998. It was indeed after. Uh, was the Wii U, Wii U released before or after 2014? Uh, we were just going through the timeline and think that this was probably before. We also said before. Yep, before 2012. I know there was quite was, a lot of conversation about that one. That was a tough one, yeah. Uh, was Google released before or after 2003? Uh, an interesting one for me and Neil because we were trying to think of what did we use to Google before Google in high school. Yeah. And uh, we just kept asking Jeeves and he wouldn't tell us, so we said after. <laughs> we were pretty sure that this was the late 90s, so we said before. Go fetch like uh, points. <laughs> uh, points to one team again. It was before 1998. Wow. Mm. Um, we just really uh, love Netscape the... Navigator, apparently. <laughs> just never, <laughs> never stop <laughs> navigating those Netscapes. Was the first printing press perfected before or after 1392? Uh, who knows? Uh, we said after. <laughs> Someone. Yeah, Someone us. knows. We said after also. Yep, that one was kind of an easy one. It was after 1450. I, I don't know if that was easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <That's> ditto. <laughs> yeah. Ditto. Was the iPhone 7 released before or after 2013? Oh, geez. I mean, it's right around that time. Uh, we were counting forward from 2006 with the first iPhone, we think, and we landed on 2013, but we just said after. Well, Jeff also did some counting, but he counted backwards, and he also came out with after. Uh, yeah, after is correct. 2016 was the mm. iPhone 7. And then for the last question, was the first podcast released before or after 2007? Uh, see, I remember listening to some Bill Simmons podcasts, I believe, in 2006. So we said before. We said after for this one, but we really weren't sure. Points for only one team. Uh, 2004 oh, was wow. the first wow. ever podcast. We thought it was a lot closer to 2007. I think it's funny. The only one we got wrong was the podcast question. <laughs> <laughs> Team OC, Omar is coming, doing very well in that swing round, only missing one. They're at 100 points total. Neil Armstrong, uh, also a strong showing. Uh, they picked up 40 points, bringing their total to 111. Isn't Team OC the first name of that Chalamet guy? Hmm? Team OC? What is it? I don't understand. <laughs> That's just pretty funny. Oh, Team OC. <laughs> Team OC. <laughs> I see. Funny guy over here. Okay, so uh, question number one for round two is a weird series of events. Um, according to Newton's third law of motion, every action has the equal and opposite reaction. Such is this bizarre one that has probably affected you in ways you aren't even aware of. Gerard Way started the band My Chemical Romance based off of tragedies he witnessed in 2001. Stephanie Meyer, with a dream and a bout of inspiration from MCR, wrote Twilight. Then, Twilight inspired the fifth best-selling book of all time. What is the name of the book, eventually series, that Twilight inspired? The Bible. You can lock in. Oh, oh yeah. Cheers. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, I believe this is uh, Matt's favorite book, Fifty Shades of Grey. It started as a fan fiction of Twilight, and then they said, you know what? Let's make new characters that are the same characters and release it as a book. Yeah. So we're going to lock in with that. I think, uh, Leanne, you had this one right away, too? Yeah. We also said Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, the librarian coming in strong. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and Fifty Shades of Grey is correct. This is probably my most favorite you know, cause and effect that's ever happened. Uh, it's just so weird to tell people this. Uh, so for question number two, we have the MCU Empire. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, spanning over currently four phases starting in 2007, are nothing short of an intellectual property empire. With titans such as the new and improved Spider-Man series and the brought to light Guardians of the Galaxy, it even boasts the highest grossing uh, movie of all time. What is this movie? I, I always get mixed up between the two. but And Neil, I could be wrong, but that's domestically, right? Because uh, I believe worldwide, so. it's still the one with the blue people. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Smurfs? <laughs> World Tour? Avatar. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm fine with that one. 
How is James Cameron that successful? We're we're locked in over here. I think it's either, and I I should know this, but I, I'm pretty sure it's either it's uh, Infinity War or Endgame, because I'm I'm almost positive it's one of the two. Do you want to go Endgame? Because that I mean I I think I saw that one a couple times. Yeah, I guess so. I yeah, it it seems like the obvious answer, and I feel like I'm getting tricked into the obvious answer. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Endgame was the last movie I remember being one of those that people lined up for and had to see at midnight, because I did, and I never do that. So we went with Endgame. Yeah, and sometimes it is the obvious answer. Uh, Avengers Endgame is the correct answer. Uh, Question three, current vocabulary. Uh, Many sayings and words have been recycled and made anew over the years of the Internet's birth. BM no longer means bowel movements. It means bad manners in video games. Cool Beans has been phased out almost entirely and now used only ironically. In 2010, an old legend was reborn. After a blooper in a video, Ryan Gutex Gutierrez reacted in a very memeable way, giving way to the still-used but now-altered Twitch emote named Blank Champ. Fill in the blank, where it's based off a 90s game also commonly known as Milk Caps. Okay, Matt and I discussed, and uh, we were having a lot of trouble with this one, even though we think we know what it's talking about. Yeah, so Internet culture is usually my wheelhouse, but I got nothing on it. I think we're just now, we realize we're getting older, and Jack has just showed us that we are. So. I'm, a, I'm a Twitch streamer myself. You are. I have no emotes. I can't figure it out. Too well, with, with no emotes, we're just going to say we're locked in. I got nothing. Good game? Like, good game, GG? Good game? Sure. We're going to say good game, champ. Go for it. Why not? <laughs> GG, no re. We got it. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I think in the milk cap game from the '90s, I'm pretty sure that's referring to Pogs, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, but um, I then we couldn't figure out <laughs> what what you do I in Pogs. Pogs. So I've Dang. never actually played the game. I know you smash a thing, so we said Smasher Champ. Uh, you talked yourself out of it. It was just Pog Champ. Um, oh. oh. Yeah. So it's just based off the '90s game called Pogs, uh, where you take cardboard cutouts and throw something heavy on them and flip them over it's i have no idea why that was a popular game but yeah pog champ was released and uh, was made again in 2010 people just commonly say pog now for all i was yeah, just in love... for the collecting i wasn't playing anything i just wanted to collect all the shiny ones mm-hmm. <laughs> i did have a yeah i had a binder with all the pogs in them but we did play a little bit yeah all of your lisa frank pogs <laughs> just to be clear that's p-o-g-s pogs yes p-o-g champ all one word just wanted to make sure <laughs> wasn't the other one <laughs> Oh yeah, no, that's uh, that's in the Patreon only game. That's uh, <laughs> uh, so for question four, um, old people hate plants. Okay, the title is misleading, but here we go anyways. In the objectively amazing series Avatar: The Last Airbender, the gang goes through their adventures, sometimes inconveniencing people in their way. One such honest businessman is in their path one too many times, trying to peddle his one and only wear. So while not the only iceberg that Aang breaks, what leafy green was he trying to peddle when he was in their way? Have you seen the M. Night Shyamalan Avatar The Last Airbender? Uh, I did not. We don't speak I didn't about either. It. Oh, this wasn't in it? Okay. Um, I... So we just got to think of a leafy green. So maybe we'll just pick one that seems you like got, it would be in an you anime. Got your, got your kale. You got your... Uh, your spinach. I was thinking spinach. Your, spinach man? Your... Oh, maybe he's, he's some sort of Popeye character. I, that would make sense. Yeah, <laughs> it would. Okay. I don't know. Why yeah. not? It's anime. <laughs> it's a spinach. We'll say spinach. I um I don't I'm not familiar with this at all. But I was just writing down greens. I had kale and spinach that you guys said. I also wrote down bok choy. Ooh, bok choy man. <laughs> bok choy man sounds like a great superhero in One Punch. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was thinking, or maybe he was a, a tea vendor. But is tea leafy? I mean. Yeah, a leafy yeah tea green. leaves, right? Yeah, I guess so. Green tea. That's got to be something, right? Not like... <laughs> it's got to be something. Right? <laughs> I really don't um, know. I mean, kale. we can go with Kale Man. Sure. Sounds good. So we got a spinach and a kale. Was it a Cabbage Man? It was Cabbages. Oh, um, oh, yeah, oh, cabbage the Man. Uh, not the only iceberg that he breaks is trying to go for you know, oh, lettuce, nice. cabbage there, but... Uh, yeah. Oh, good clue. I didn't need not even put that together. Yeah. Uh, Clues are not helpful when you know nothing about the subject. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I know that through like memes, not even from seeing the show. 
Mm. That he has cabbage. That it's a cabbage. Yeah, day. it's like four or five times he just runs straight through his cart and he yells, "My cabbage is just every single time." <laughs> I love anime. <laughs> um, question five: Top sellers. Uh, there is no doubt about it. Video games have changed the world, springing up competitive tournaments, letting players of all skill levels stream and make content as their main careers, and even springing off into movies and TV shows. We all know some of the classics, anywhere from Pong to Call of Duty. However, some games are even more popular than the rest. Four points. Name the three best-selling single-game titles of all time, released in 2011, 2013, and 1984, respectively. All right, uh, we wrote down some titles here. Uh, we think we're kind of close, so we're going to lock in. All right, Leanne and I took a while discussing these. We're kind of a little lost, but we ended up settling on Tetris, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, and Grand uh, Theft Auto V as our guesses. We uh, went with the OG Super Mario Brothers just because of, of it being uh, with the system. We thought maybe that one was pretty big. Uh, I wrote down San Andreas or Vice City, but Matt said he thinks GTA 4 was bigger, right? GTA 4? I think they got – they there was GTA 4, which I think was San Andreas, and then they released GTA 4 again. I don't remember exactly what it is, but this was like a another game. So we said GTA 4. And then we went with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Uh, so no points, but uh, Omar was pretty close there. Uh, number one was Minecraft. Number two wow. is GTA V. And number three is Tetris. I can't believe we didn't come up with Minecraft. It didn't even occur to me because it's not a video game on a console. You can play it on every single console. Yeah, I have, it's I on have everything. everything yeah. I, I always but just yeah, think it's it's a definitely PC one game. That I was too late for. Yeah, mm. definitely. Mm. But So it was – I'm sorry. It was uh, – GTA 5, Minecraft, and what was the... Uh, number one, Minecraft. Tetris. Number two, GTA 5. Number three, Tetris. Oh, oh so we did have two out of three. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, uh, you guys both got 20 points in the first half of the second round, bringing the totals for Omar to 120 and Neil Armstrong, 131. So an actually close game. Mm -hmm. uh, question six, embarrassing mix-up. So I have something to confess. Until Neil recently published his book, for some reason I thought Neil Patrick Harris and Patrick Swayze were the same person. So, in honor of my mistake, here's a How I Met Your Mother question. Uh, the bro code is something that is brought up very often in the show, written by Barney with a series of rules that should be followed by all bros. What is rule number one? So we wrote down a bunch of uh, options here, a lot of them not aging well, yeah, kind of like the bro, show. The bro code might not uh, be as well received in 2022 as it did in 2007. Yeah, the, the first one we wrote down, I think, is definitely not good. So we, we're going to go with our second mm -hmm. option here and lock in. So I believe this is don't feed them after midnight. No, that's something different. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, what do you think, Leanne? I, I've seen all of the show, and I'm not coming up with anything. I mean, I, I'm with them that it's something that probably found really cringy. Helping a bro or like not interfering with another bro when he's trying to hook up with a girl or something like that. But yeah, I... Uh, tragically, the ones that have come to mind are like, you know, the classic bros before hoes. I know. <laughs> unfortunately, we were all teetering around that one, um, which could have made that show. Um Mm hmm i don't no no bro left behind um I, I, we could say never block a bro i, I feel like it's <laughs> something like that but i don't i don't know for sure i can't believe i've seen all of this show and i've got nothing but um I what a waste of my time <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. no blocking of the bro uh, no no yeah. blocking of the bros yeah okay. I, th I think our instinct was right on what number one probably is, which mm -hmm. they said, which is probably bros before hoes. But we thought maybe it was don't leave a bro behind. Uh, yeah, you guys shouldn't have talked yourselves out of it. It was just bros before hoes. Mm. Uh, probably the cringiest thing I ever said in middle school. Oh, yeah. Unfortunate. Right. <laughs> I, think that show, I think that show was successful in like their friends group being realistic mm. and like kind of inviting the viewer into it. Right. But apart from that, like, yeah, a lot of this stuff doesn't age well. Uh, all right. Uh, question seven. Uh, it wouldn't hurt a fly. Humans are always striving forwards to look at and be places they just have no right to be. Elon Musk put a car into space in 2018. Scott Kelly, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, uh, Mikhail Koryenko, returned to Earth from a one-year bout to the ISS in 2016. 
and the first ever orbit and landing of a comet happened in 2014. However, that's not what I need to know today. Four points, what internet adored rover landed on Mars in 2012 and is still operational to this day? What's his name? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, uh, we think we got it. We're going to lock in. Is this Curiosity? I think so. I, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the one that went there before Curiosity. I think Pathfinder was way older, though. So I think, I think we'll say... Yeah, the internet adored part. I think Curiosity sounds right. Yeah, he sings himself happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Not he, they. Sorry. Yeah. We but. knew this from the fact that the rover has killed so many cats. So uh, we said <laughs> oh, Curiosity. Uh, yeah, like I said, it wouldn't hurt a fly. Uh, Curiosity rover was uh, put down in uh, 2012. And a uh, little known fact, it actually only sang birthday, happy birthday to itself once. It's only done that once. People just think it does it every year. All right. Uh, question eight. Uh, 2020, the most confusing year. Uh, 2020 was nothing short of a year filled with once in a lifetimes. We all know the not so amazing things, so let's focus on the good. Pope Benedict XVI becomes the longest po living pope since 1903. Africa is officially declared uh, free of wild polio, and astronomers find the w first black hole in a star system that's visible to the naked eye. Another great step forward in human rights also comes in the form of which Central American country being the first to legalize same sex marriage? Yeah, so uh, I wrote down that some places that were definitely in South America, and Matt corrected me, and he wrote down an answer that I like, so I'll let him uh, say it when we lock in. I mean, I'm, there's a couple of countries that I feel like it's just less likely to be. Yeah. Um, I was thinking maybe Costa Rica. I was also thinking Costa Rica. Um, I didn't think it was Honduras or Guatemala. Nicaragua, Nicaragua didn't strike no. me. El Salvador, didn't strike I don't me think as... so. Nope. And um, I don't think Panama. we're going Panama for the memes. So I think we got all of the Central American mm -hmm. countries. But um, I, so, yeah, Costa my Rica? gut's at Costa Rica. Okay. Costa Rica, we're going to lock These in. These two named a lot of Central American countries. They did. And Costa Rica is, in, is an interesting guess because uh, of the conglomerate. I didn't even think of that one. Yeah. That they're all in the coffee belt, so yeah. you've heard of all of these countries, actually. So <laughs> we didn't know, and uh, we just said maybe it's Guatemala. I like Guatemala. Uh, yeah, with their amazing Central American geography, uh, Costa Rica was the first Central American country. Nice. They're creeping up. The OC is. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's more we're fading. <laughs> we're we're fading. Yeah, we're fading. <laughs> you sound so <laughs> defeated. The game's not even over. We're floating in space, like like. Also, you know, we're one point you're behind. You're still up. You only you only mit, lost one question. Uh, remember when we used to get questions right now? There's really no fade. Are you talking about one question ago? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, two thousand uh, two thousand nine. Yep. <laughs> Round two, question nine. Uh, all good things must come to an end. So just how we are nearing the end of our questions, so in 2021 did some major things also end. The era of Alex Trebek was uh, brought to a graceful end. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West got divorced, and a particular band was finally broken up. After 28 years of music and tours, which electronic med music group finally broke up in late 2021. Well, yeah, we can lock in. Oh, such a sad, <laughs> such a sad uh, pour, video. I'm gonna pour one out right now. 28 years. I mean, it's got to be. If he's saying electronic, I mean, did Daft Punk break up? Because that'd be really sad. It's two guys. And if they broke up, I mean, what hope do we have? <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I don't remember this happening. I don't remember electronic group. Yeah, let's let's go let's go with Daft Punk. Maybe they're done. Yeah, hopefully not, but they might be. Such a sad video they released. I'm yeah, I'm but, I'm, but also hopeful. I'm really sad, actually, not for my loss of Daft Punk, but that my friends don't remember the mourning period that I went through when this <laughs> happened. Um, we said Daft Punk. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, Daft Punk uh, broke up at, at the very end of 2021. How am I just hearing about this now? Do you guys not remember <laughs> when point, Ken and though, I came in wearing all black and being all sad about it? I thought it was a normal Sunday. At definitely, that point, though, I wouldn't call it a breakup so much as a retirement. You yeah, because they oh, yeah. Okay. They're still friends. They're hanging up the headphones. So, yeah, it's Daft Punk, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they actually heard my previous question. I had Electronic Duo written down, but I was like, that would be too obvious. I can't write, write Duo. So, that would have been um, too obvious. Yeah, you so just heard, you heard past me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, final question to round two. Uh, the funniest war. Uh, as of June 14th, 2022, my personal favorite war finally came to a peaceful conclusion. In a territorial dispute between Canada and Denmark over the Hans Island, starting in 2005, each country would go to the small island, 
plant a flag of their country, leave a bottle of liquor behind along with some sort of short and sweet note. What cleverly named war was this? You know what I like about this game? All the questions are around like pretty popular trivia questions, but from a different angle. You know what I mean? At just asking a slightly different question about some popular topics, which is really neat. What were the two countries? Uh, Canada and Denmark. I, I have no idea. I did, I've never heard of this story either. I don't even know how I didn't know if Daft Punk retired or broke mm-hmm. up. So let's just go with your answer because I, I should just be shot out to space because I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> go hang out with curiosity. Yeah. Going to go around the world. <laughs> uh, we're locked in with an answer. No, I vaguely recall the thing about the bottle of alcohol that seems to ring some sort of bell to me i'm wondering like if maybe there was something about like what kind of alcohols they were leaving i think so because i think it was whiskey i think this was the whiskey war um do you think denmark makes whiskey i don't i don't know if they do i think canada might have been the one leaving that bottle but i kind of remember hearing this recently um Because it was like the last unsettled bit of like NATO. Like NATO was like, uh, I guess if we're going to accept new people, we should get our act together. And, you know, they buried the hatchet. So um, I'm fine with that. Okay. We're going to go whiskey war. Mm, that sounds fun. Um, we had no idea. Uh, I think it might have something to do with the fact that I haven't eaten yet. Um, but we locked in with something that sounds delicious. The Maple Danish War. Mm, that's I wish it was named that. Uh, yeah, the the whiskey war or the liquor war. Um, from 2005 to 2022, they would just go, rip up the other person's flag, put down a bottle of liquor and a passive-aggressive note, and go back uh, in t- typical Canadian and Denmarkian fashion. <laughs> well, at the uh, conclusion of regulation, it looks like Neil Armstrong's follicles fading fast mm. in the second round, fading so fast they have 151, taking a slight lead. Uh, Omar's coming, 160. Oh, Omar's gone. They passed that. <laughs> <laughs> Omar came and then he went. Yeah. <laughs> and in typical Omar fashion, the other person is way worse for the wear. <laughs> and let's see what our categories are for the final. Question one would be enig- enigmatology, the study of puzzles. Entomology, the study of insects. Etymology, the study of words. Egyptology, the study of ancient Egypt. And exogeology, the study of celestial bodies. The wagers are locked in, and it looks like everybody's pushing the chips onto the table. 30s all the way down. Uh, Neil Armstrong's follicles, if they blow it completely, they get one point left. So we'll see what happens. Let's have the questions. All right, question number one under the study of puzzles. Uh, Alexander the Great was certainly that indeed. Through his practical knowledge of combat and politics, he conquered the battlefield in the mere room he was in, including the puzzle that supposedly brought, supposedly brought him his power over Greece. According to legend, what did Alexander cut in half a supposed impossible puzzle? In the study of insects, bees are an amazing and important species to our world. From you say being beads intel- or bees? <laughs> Be- <laughs> Be- uh, bees. Uh, bees are an amazing and important species to our world from being intelligent enough to use their own bodies as a form of measurement called festooning to pollinizing millions of plants a year with their natural instincts for math and science it is clear to see that they would use only the most efficient shape for their honeycombs what is the efficient shape that they use in the study of words as everyone knows the english language is just multiple other languages taped together in a trench coat including some of the more scientific words like various various phobias, for example, such as the word for the fear of holes, where its roots come from the Greek language. What is the f- word for fear of holes? You have that, Ken. <laughs> uh, in the study of ancient Egypt, ancient Egypt is never talked about enough. With its amazing feats of engineering, its vast borders and the height of its power, and the immense mythos, with gods and goddesses such as Ra and Osiris, one such god has been used for a Marvel book comic book character who very recently got his own TV series. Moon Knight, a mercenary with a powerful suit of armor, enacts the will of which moon god? And in the study of celestial bodies... To give scientists credit, I'm sure after a few billion planets and stars, naming can become a bit difficult. 
However, I will never excuse the fact that our own Earth is the only planet in the solar system not named after some Roman god like the rest are. With that small rant aside, however, let's go back to these Greek roots that the Roman gods came from. Where are the Greek equivalents of the planets in our solar system, Pluto included? Points for three named. Those are the questions, and we'll be right back with the answers. Voodoo! The answers are now in. Uh, some interesting stuff going on, so let's see how uh, how this works out, because uh, the game's up in the air. So let's have the questions one more time. Yeah, for question one, uh, what did Alexander the Great cut in half, this supposedly impossible puzzle? Yeah, so this one took us a minute, um, but then once Jeff hit on it, we were like, yeah, that's that. That's the answer. We said not. Not? Oh, like K-N-O-T? Like K-N-O-T, yes. <laughs> well, we also had not the right answer because we said uh pandora's box we yeah don't why know. not he just Ooh, cut it open he just uh, <laughs> sliced it open from oc can i get a little something a little bit more specific it has it has is an it, actual name to it is it a gordian uh, knot i think i think Leanne's yeah got it. that that's correct the gordian knot nice uh, pull <laughs> <laughs> wow that's what probably what i need massage out of my shoulders after recording <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for the study of insects, uh, bees are amazing, as we all know. Uh, but what is the most efficient shape that they use for their honeycombs? So I think I was way off on this one, and Matt was making fun of me. So in high school, when I was a freshman, I was on the golf team for like two months. And uh, I was curious I about... Neil golfing. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great. Uh, and uh, I found a little book on how to make golf balls. And I was like, well, the triangle is so strong of a shape with weight and whatnot, disbursement. I was like, why don't golf balls have triangles instead of circles on them? And the whole golf team made fun of me and I quit. So um, <laughs> yeah. Matt was like, I don't think it's a triangle. And I kept saying hexagon over and over. And you're like, I don't know, triangles. Have you heard about triangles? <laughs> triangles. Uh, yeah. We said hexagon because I think that's the right answer. Um, yeah, I believe Jack and I do have some overlap and interest here. Um, there's a CGP Grey video called Hexagons Are Bestagons. Um, I think the argument could be made that they're just bad at making circles, but we locked in at hexagon, uh, which is the platonic shape with the most sides that interlocks with itself. Yeah, uh, hexagons are the bestagons, by f one of my favorite CGP Grey videos. Uh, yeah, hexagons are the, uh, what bees use, or just crappy circles. Um... So Shots fired. Uh, Bees come uh, at me. They do anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> in the study of words, what is the word for fear of holes? We locked in with trypophobia. Oh, we knew this one right away. I mean, Matt and I were talking about holes for at least five minutes. <laughs> holes for holes for minutes. Uh, the uh, the classic uh, shylophobia, we said. <laughs> uh, points for one team, trypophobia. <laughs> Oh, wow. so close. I, I think they should get points for that magnificent <laughs> joke, though. <laughs> uh, you have to sing it? <laughs> when you're alone in the woods. Um, okay, so the study of ancient Egypt. Um, moon Knight, which moon god does he enact the will of? Uh, this one, uh, I've never seen the show. I know the comic book character, uh, and I was going to write a question about it, and I couldn't remember if it was Shoe Cone or Cone Shoe. Uh, but I, I was like, Shu Kone sounds too similar to Shao Kahn from Mortal Kombat, so I just said, I think it's Kone Shu. That's why. <laughs> no, we, I, I thought it started with a K, but I think this might be an emperor or pharaoh. We guessed Khufu. Uh, points for one team, it's Khan Shu is okay. how it's pronounced. But yeah, Khan Shu is the correct god. Ah, darn it. Thank you for your mercy there on mm -hmm. Kone Shu. Yeah, I, I understood what you're saying. <laughs> To do spell it C O N E shoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what those elves are. It's Neil's yeah. second Cone favorite shoes. type of pastry. <laughs> ah, yes. And then the last question in the study of celestial bodies What are the Greek equivalents of the planets in our solar system, Pluto included? You only need three of them for points. Um, yeah, so Jeff really wants us to flex and name all of them, but I'm just going to say three. Um, we've got Venus is Aphrodite. Mars is Aries, and Neptune is Poseidon. Oh, Poseidon. I forgot about Poseidon. Yeah, Poseidon. Poseidon. <laughs> He's always uh, underwater. We got, <laughs> we got uh, Mars, I believe, is Aries. Uh, I think Mercury is Hermes, so we said Hermes. And then we weren't sure on the other one, so we just said Zeus is probably one of them. Uh, could you be more specific on which one Zeus is? Can we? Oh, what's the, what's the biggest planet, Jupiter or Uranus? <laughs> 
It's got to be the biggest one, right? Because it's Zeus. So <laughs> it go, that's not Jupiter. He's probably Jupiter. Yeah, we'll do be. Jupiter. I think Uranus. He's got is, big Jupiter energy. I think Uranus is a trick because Uranus is Greek. Mm. Um, yeah, with an amazing pool, uh, Jupiter is Zeus. Uh, Uranus is technically Uranus in Greek. Pluto is Hades, and I think you guys named all the rest of them. I don't know. I'm really not that good at. Uh, <laughs> at I think the we missed. Oh, I, we never figured out Saturn. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Saturn is um, Kronos. He's not actually oh. technically a god. He's a Titan. Titan. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, a close final round uh, to conclude the game. Looks like uh, Neil Armstrong did show up in the final, gaining 30 points to bring their total to 181. But just a little stronger, the OC, Omar's a coming, uh, 250 points to end the game. You guys are the cream of the crop. Cream, rise to the top, oh yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Great game, both of you, yeah. for Leah and not me. We faded <laughs> away so hard, but <laughs> no. That was, mm-hmm. You literally Steph missed. Curry, you were fading so. You hard. literally <laughs> missed two questions that they they didn't. Seriously, get, in so. the final, yeah, it faded. It seemed <laughs> <laughs> much like my follicles. We have faded behind. Well, my favorite version of faded is by Soul Decision, a boy band. From <laughs> oh Canada. my God! Thank but, you. I want a high five for that. That's yes. a great, great call. Uh, <laughs> enough nonsense from us, though. Yeah, enough about us being a boy band. So, uh, Jack, thank you very much for writing this game uh, and putting together uh, all these wonderful questions that span so many different uh, decades. Uh, any final words from you? Anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Any all that good stuff. Uh, well, first off, thank you to Louie on the Discord, uh, the Playtester Pro, for helping me out with a lot of this. Uh, thank you for my friends and family who I forced to listen to every single question about six times. Uh, and shout out to the Patreon, because otherwise I wouldn't be here. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your support. And uh, Leanne, uh, you emailed us. This isn't really true, but you said you wanted to crush us, but we're just going to make it fact now. <laughs> uh, so you did crush us. Uh, thank you for joining us, for being a Patreon supporter. Uh, any uh, final words from you as well? Uh, I just want to say thank you to my husband for managing to keep the kids quiet while I did this, which is not an easy feat. And we said it at the beginning, but I just want to say it again. Support your local library, um, especially books and programming featuring people of color and people in the LGBTQ community. They're really coming under fire right now. They could use your support. Be vocal about it. Well said. Well said. Uh, Well, thank you both for for joining us today. Uh, Anything else here in the studio? Or no, no. That's it. That's it. Let's get the hell out of here. All right. (laughs) Well, Well, thank you to everyone for listening and for everyone who supports us. For Matt, Ken, Jeff, Jack, Leanne. My name is Neil. Jacked. Jacked. My name is Neil, and that was Trivial. <laughs> it's either got to be that or something to do with like a, a ritual, um, you know, that they would do. To, potpourri. Yeah, they're making potpourri for all their, their monk uh, activities. Farts. Bedside tables. Yeah. Monk farts. Let's just go with it. Monk farts. <laughs> New team name I call. It. <laughs> uh, let's just go with that. Yeah, Photoshop that. Jeff. We know they be, they used it for fireworks, but we, they they weren't trying to make fireworks. So we'll go with Matt's answer here. <laughs>